Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. <laughs> Welcome to Couch Pilots, all of my friends. The show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Captain Jason, a.k.a. the Black Hatfield, and across from me is my captain and yours, Captain Philip Restashire. Good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing real good. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but there is a super moon outside. It was super big, and I was wondering if it was going to affect like our flight. I mean, in the gravitational pull or, you know, just all the the rays of light that are bouncing from the sun right. to the moon into our faces. Yeah, it bounces off the moon, sticks to you. <laughs> and, I mean, we know the moon controls the tide, right? And this is this is a super moon because it's the closest the moon's going to be. For like 18 more years. Yeah. And, like, pe- there's, like, the ocean's, like, flooding. The yeah. T- oh, yeah. The, it, hurricanes and tsunamis around the world because of the super moon. Um, I think I am a little worried to take it up. And are you worried about the stuff in the middle? Oh, no, I'm never worried about the stuff in the middle. I, I just I look at all those uh, gadgets and, and I, I, on, the, on the panel that control the plane and all the different gauges. And I feel like the, the little uh, lever is just going to go topsy-turvy. I'm, Ooh, I'm really worried. I didn't think about that because of the gravitational pull. Right. Well, I mean. We'll find out. What, what, what else are we going to do? You know what I mean? We, we, we've already gassed her up. Yeah, I mean, we have no choice. The gas goes bad in a couple hours. Maybe people <laughs> don't know right. who don't fly planes like we do, but once you gas a plane up, the clock's ticking. Yeah, you, you got to get going. You got to go. And, you know, we called DSJ in for his normal shift. Mm-hmm. You know, so what are we going to do? Pay him and then not go? We'll be out on money for him, right? And then we'll be out on money and gas. Right. And then all the money that we have to spend on D batteries to light his golden cones. Right. I don't think so. We're not, we're not going to pay out all that money. No, I'm definitely not into doing that. At all. Well, um, for better or worse, we have... Richer for poorer. For, yeah, till, in sickness and health. Till death do us part. We do have a new president, right? Yeah, we have a new president. Um, I didn't even stay up on election night to watch. I did. Really, you stayed up. Molly was uh, really concerned to the stewardess, Molly. Mm-hmm. She was really concerned about it. And I just like, eh, I'm going to go to sleep. And uh, came in the next day to... Um, Check the tires on the plane, right? You know, because it was like the first frost, I think, and that and so, that can affect pressure oh, in the tire for sure, definitely. And um, DSJ was he was there, and I'm like, "What are you doing here on your day off?" And he's like, "Today's the day." Because that, that was a, a Wednesday, then it must have been that you were right. there because election was Tuesday, and we do our flights on Monday, as everyone knows. So you go in on a Wednesday morning, and you're right, DSJ's got multiple other jobs, but he's there in the hangar on his day off. Yeah, and he was all excited, and he was, he was at his laptop or something, and he was showing me these pictures yeah, of Donald Trump. Huh. And I was like, did you vote for Donald Trump, DSJ? And he's like, yeah, I did. And I was like, I can't hmm. believe they even let you vote. You shouldn't even be able to. Because he's a felon. Right, <laughs> right. A lot of people don't know the DSJ is a felon. Well, he's, uh, we touched on it briefly in a, a recent episode, but he, he does have a bit of a fetish for fire. And so I, mean, I think, I mean, I, I honestly I don't know how old he is. You could tell me he was 55. You, could you tell can't me tell was, with those you, you people. You can't tell with those, uh, those arsonists uh, how old they are. But at some point in his life, because we did a background check, and it was sometime, I think it was in the late 80s or early 90s, he got arrested for arson right so i yeah i don't know some loophole in the system or something but he was apparently able to vote yeah and so he was all excited and um you know a couple days later trump had to go meet go to the white house and you know meet the real president get all the official official stuff kicked off right right he had to set up the moving company and stuff and he wanted to take uh, measurements of a lot of the rooms. Do you know and, who they ended up with with the moving company? Do you know who they ended up going with? Um, two guys, one truck. Great business. Great. Um, you think to yourself, no overhead. Two guys, one truck. It's just two dudes circumnavigating the planet in a truck. There's no uh, brick and mortar place. You know, it's just it's all right there. Right. So he, 
and DSJ was showing me this picture, and he was laughing, just laughing. He was just laughing. You know what he was doing? No, what was that? He was laughing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, but he showed me this video of Donald Trump's plane at LaGuardia. Okay, New York. Sure. And I was like, why are you showing me somebody else's plane? And we got the main plane yeah, here. Yeah, Air Force One that was sold to us by President Obama. Right, the, the plane of all care. planes. Mm-hmm. And um, the video shows these two fire trucks, like, squirting just out of water. Um, like, and, like, a cro- one on each side. And they were, like, cross-hatching the okay. airplane. And the airplane was getting ready to take off. Or, no, it was landing. No, it was taking off at New York. Yeah, it was, it was taking- going to New York to meet Obama. No, it was going to Washington. Right. And so it was it was getting on the tarmac, and they were spraying water all over it. It was like a ceremonial, uh, like, plane washing because they was going to meet the president. And so you want your plane to look the best. Absolutely. And I was like, that seems like a waste of water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, and, and DSD was like, I set that all up. I got some friends over at LaGuardia. You know, I know some people. Other tarmac workers? Yeah, other tarmac workers and, and firefighters. Sure. Oddly enough, the tarmac workers and the firefighters are in the same union, which I find very bizarre. I think that's something that Hoffa set up in like the uh, the 30s right. or 40s. Right, it is. It is odd. I didn't ask any questions about that because I was just so amazed that like he set that all up. And I'm like, when was the last time you washed our airplane? Right. Like I don't even remember the last time he said, "Hey, I washed the plane." No, I don't. No, I don't think those words have ever come out of his mouth. So he he got that all set up. Was he there himself, or this was just the fruit of his labor? Yeah, it was the fruit of his labor. I think he was like watching on Skype or Snapchat or something. Okay, but he was excited. He's he's all trumped out. He's trumped out. You know, it's funny because he's he knew he met uh, Barack Hussein Obamacare at the Special Olympics where he wants right. Some medals. That, yeah, because that's how originally that's how he it was DSJ that got us in touch with President Barack Obama. Yeah. about getting Air Force One. He's, he has presidential hookups. How? I don't know if it's just coincidences. If he's got some weird network through his uh, his union, I have no idea. But he is he's proving himself to be quite a valuable employee for us. Yeah, and I'm thinking to myself, why didn't I get into the Special Olympics when I could for just for the networking purposes? Yeah, there's still time. Your life isn't over. Well, it, my life's really Your over. Your life's about over. <laughs> well, that's incredible. I, I'm so happy that he got to set that up. And, uh, I mean, it, it is kind of, it's history in the making. Right? Definitely, definitely. So, incredible. Big ups to DSJ, and I, um, you know, our tarback worker. We haven't talked about DSJ in a while. We, I love him. Well, I love him, too. He, he's the, uh, for, for those who don't know, he's a, he's a fellow of indiscriminate age who works on our tarmac with those golden cones. Mm-hmm. He directs us when we take off. He directs us when we, when we land. Right. He takes care of the plane storage-wise and everything, gasses it up. I mean, he does the, the 360-point check. Right. For each flight, he gets here on like Saturday night, mm-hmm. I think, and it takes him like almost forty eight hours to yeah. do the checks. And we've never had a problem. No, but we, he's never washed our plane either. That's true. You think you think there's going to be a gunk buildup sometime? Yeah, yeah like build? goose poop and stuff. Goose poop and yeah. like cloud, like cloud residue. Cloud poop. Oh, cloud residue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cloud residue and goose poop. <laughs> I think right. so. And. um I, you know, it's not even probably worth mentioning, but he happens to have Down syndrome. Yeah, well, it's no big deal, though. I mean, we treat him just like we would anybody else. I mean, sure. we, we get mad at him. I, I treat him just like anyone else who would have Down syndrome. Right. You know? Just the same. So, um, big ups to DSJ for all the presidential hookups that he's got. Great worker. Congratulations to you, sir. I think he, I'm sorry. It's, I mean, it seems to me like he doesn't have any kind of loyalty to a Republicans or Democrats or anything because. You know, if he's and that's his right as an American. You know, right. that's his freedom to choose, as Devo once said. Right? Is that who Devo said it? You say Devis? <laughs> Devis and butthead. Devis and butthead. <laughs> oh boy, um, we have the results, I believe, of our first contest. Right. So, um, I, I think you have some more information on that. Sure. Um, we recently got our own dial-in number, so people can call and leave us voicemails. Um, we haven't set it up to where they can call during the show because, I mean, are we supposed to be on the phone while we're flying? Nah. No. 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 Uh, the number is one nine one zero pilots one. Right. Easy um, to remember. Yeah, very easy to remember. Pilots plural because there's two of us. Right. Uh, and that's one. Nine one zero four. I'm gonna stop. Blah, blah, blah. One nine one zero seven four five six eight seven one. And we 
last episode, we were like, hey, um, on the Susan 313 episode, we were like, hey, the first person to use the voicemail, you know, is going to get a surprise prize. Oh, boy. And, you know, usually you have to accumulate enough frequent flyer points from listening or sharing the program or contacting us. You have to accumulate those to add up for a surprise prize. But in this case, it's a simple, who can dial the fastest? Right. And um, also it was, hey, I'll give my show notes that I have for Susan 313. Wow. They're they're my writing. In the age of identity theft, the fastest growing uh, crime out there, you are just handing over your handwriting. You're handing over your DNA that's on that paper. Right. I licked it. That doesn't help. (laughs) But so, uh, that's, that's awfully generous of you. Yeah, so uh, we got the first uh, voicemail here, if I can uh, be a so kind. And uh, I'll, we'll talk about who it is after, or should we announce it no, first? We'll go, let's go ahead and play it first. Okay. This is where I call to get boner pills. I need boner pills. Boner pills. Pills for my boner. I need them. It's actually Richard Schreiner. I hope I'm the first person to call because I deserve all of the gifts and all of the prizes and all of the boner pills. All right, bye. Wow, that was amazing. That was uh, Richard Don't Call Me Dick. Yeah, Richard Don't Call Me Dick. Um, his girlfriend, you know, obviously is Lori Garcia, mm-hmm. but we're not supposed to discuss her last name her, over and over her, again. Her identity. Um, so he was the first one yeah. to use it. At first, I thought. This is uh, someone calling the wrong number. Right, for like uh, calling Viagra. Yeah, he, he's looking. And he said pills for his boner. And I would think you'd want pills, because when I think about that, boners and pills, I think, okay, I've got a flaccid penis. I want a pill I, to get a boner. To get a boner. But he's saying that maybe he has a boner already, but he needs pills for his boner. Now, what, what, do, you, what do you think his ailment is, if that's the well, case? Well, to bring it down. Oh, well, Lori's probably tired and in pain. You think he's got an erection that's lasted more than four hours? Oh, I've seen pictures of Richard. He his erection has lasted a really long time, and with a beautiful girlfriend like Lori, mm-hmm. who wouldn't? Well, how, through pictures, how do you know he's got a? Are they time stamped that you, that you know that you know that he's had a boner for more than four hours? Mm-hmm. How does that work? Well, he emailed every, every. We set it up to every time he takes a picture on his phone. Yeah, it comes to me. Okay, and he's always taking pictures of his boner. <laughs> well, he's taking pictures of him and Lori in bed listening to Couch Pilots, and he's okay. got a boner. I mean, it's like. They did this one picture, and you kind of see down. You know, he like they're laying down. He kind of put his arm out, kind of a selfie, selfie, yeah. and then you just you know you saw all the way to his toes, but you couldn't even see his toes because popping a tent. Custom was popping a tent, huh. and, and I I felt bad for Lori to be honest with you. And then the second half, it, he reveals who it is, right? And then you're like, oh, okay, this is a. And he gave his last name. Player. Don't do that. Had, I, what was it, Yelder? I I, could, I, I bleeped it out. Okay, I bleeped it out because you know for security purposes, right? I don't want people knocking on his door. No, absolutely not. I mean, it's the same door that Lori Garcia mm-hmm. has. I think they live together it, in sin. Right. They're, yeah, they're laying together biblically, obviously, and it's sin. And, and I mean, that's not for us to judge. I mean, no. they'll be dealt with in the afterlife by uh, St. Peter and Jesus Christ, but that's not for us to say. Right. Um, so the second party reveals who it is, and uh, one of our, our most favorite uh, frequent flyers. Definitely. And, and, to, and to the victor... Go the spoils. So what do we have for him, Blake? Well, uh, like I said before, uh, me and uh, Captain Russia shirt. Oh, that's me. <laughs> me and uh, the Black Captain uh, autographed my show notes for Season 313, um, Episode 8 from Season 5. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know me. I take immaculate notes. The The paper has not even been folded. Yeah, that's no, very crisp. You, you have very tiny but distinct. Do you write in all caps? Yes. <laughs> okay. So it's like you're yelling all of your notes, right? Basically. Okay. So we get that. And a little something for my personal collection. Uh, as we all know, I'm, one of my AKs is the Bottle Cap Kid. Right. And I have, I think, literally about a thousand bottle caps, which I just sent you a picture sure. for your son to con- for confirmation over the weekend. And thanks for telling my son to suck it. <laughs> I hope you didn't show that to him. No, I did. Oh. I said, Uncle Jason told you to suck it. <laughs> oh, boy. If something happens to you, I'm sure I won't get them. <laughs> Anyway, I have a bunch of doubles, and to uh, to Richard, here comes a little avalanche of bottle caps. Nice. Oh yeah. You give him all those? All six. All right. But there's some, there's some really cool ones in here, including the com- one of the comedy bang bang ones that I just got. That's awesome. And then uh, here's the local one for Urban Chestnut that maybe they don't have out there, so it'd be tough to find. Here's some really old ones that have uh, the cork on the back. Here's one. Oh, wow. Bells. I think they make two hearted ale. 
And then my favorite all-time uh, soda, dang, that's good, uh, butterscotch root beer. Very good. Very, so. very nice. Well, oh, jeez. <laughs> suck it. Now you suck it. <laughs> now you know I can't go on. Oops. We, we have more. We do have more. Whoops. I can't go on with these on the floor. That's fine. So we do. We did. Uh, we did. We got a couple of voicemails on the new hotline, including Richard, but also uh, someone else, and we're going to play that for you right now. Hey guys, it's Biggie. Just calling to let you guys know that your podcast is awesome. Makes me laugh all the time. Yeah, all the time. Great laughs. Uh, keep up the good work. Uh, keep spreading the word. All right, well, Biggie from IBWIP fame. Right. And I think he's been on the show. I think he was on the Wonder Woman episode. Yes, he was on the Wonder Woman episode. Um, great guy, great guy. He was caught up in that love triangle with um, the girl who had singular sclerosis. Jacob, you Jacob, Jacob. And DSJ. Mm-hmm. And he was acting as security kind of for Jacob, but paid for it by DSJ. Exactly. So, so big ups to Biggie. Um, those actually come through an email. How we have it set up, and it, the email or the uh, the voicemail tries to make sense of what the person says, and it gives it to, uh, in, uh, in in text. And when I read the email, it said, "Hey guys, it's Becky," <laughs> and it is not Becky; it is Biggie. No, we were all excited. We're like, "Ooh, who's Becky?" We don't know. So if you've never listened to the show before, or if you've been listening, uh, send us a voicemail and just say hi. Tell us who, what your name is, where you're from, and give us your stance on boner pills. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> also, with Richard's uh, prize pack, mm. um, two surprise prizes. I bought one this weekend okay. for him. Now, see, it's funny that you, uh, you buy them. I have a junk drawer, and usually I just, you know, I don't even, I open it, and I don't even look in the drawer. I just pick something out, right. and that becomes a surprise prize. But you got, you bought something. Yeah, I bought something for him. Okay. So. Can you, it is a surprise, so you can't it's mention it? It's a surprise prize. I can tell you. After the episode. Oh, boy. I cannot wait. I mm. cannot wait. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, the captains have turned on the fasten seatbelt sign. That's Couch Pilots. That's the it's, podcast. Yeah. We, we, we're, that's who we are. That's what we do. We've been doing it for 50-some episodes. This is 51, perhaps? 52-ish? <clears throat> So almost a year, or almost, not yeah, shuffle through the papers to, to find out exactly. Um, actually, I have it right here. Why is everything sound so sensitive today? I don't know. You hook up this shit all the time. You should know what you're doing. Uh, it is 51. It's the 51st episode of Couch mm-hmm. Pilots, the show that finds, after a, the thorough scouring of the internet, television shows that had one and only one episode, we find out where they are, we watch them, and then we tell you about them. And we do it while we're on an airplane, oddly enough. Right. It, feels, it, seems like, it almost seems like texting and driving. Why would we do all that while in the air? Um, we're unique. Yeah. We're special. We're talented. I mean, we're more right. talented than anybody has ever been. LeBron James, yeah. not as talented as us. Uh, Michael Jackson, not as talented as us. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Michael right. Showalter, not as talented as us. Michael Sh- You're throwing him in there with Jackson and LeBron, huh? Yeah. Yeah, why not, I guess, huh? So, so that's what we're doing today. And, and today we discussed the pilot episode of What's Going On with Mike Mitchell from the, from the year of our Lord, 2000 plus 11. 2000 plus 11. Great year. One of the, one of the better years, I'm sure. Well, now, what does that mean? Let's see. Well, I, think, I think I met Molly in 2011. Great year then. <laughs> Amazing year. And you're still with her to this day. Uh, yep. Yeah. The longest, one of the longest relationships of my life, actually. Yeah. I not one so. of the long, well, not the longest marriage yet, but we're we're coming up close on yeah, that. Yeah, you just, I mean, I think your death and and where the longest point of a relationship will be is just right around the same time. I, oh, yeah. I hope you outlast your previous relationship, so you can go to the grave knowing that you did it. Exactly. It's yeah. all about it's all about making goals for yourself and meeting them. That's right. Give yourself a reason to get out of bed every day, <clears throat> and uh, or to kill yourself. <laughs> Oh, yeah, or, or just like the beginning of uh, Lethal Weapon, right, when he uh, put the gun up to his head and tried to come up with a reason every day not to kill himself. I never saw it. Neither did I. Um, this is the part of the show where we get into our, our digital time machine. We go back in time. We say, what's going on with Mike Mitchell came out in 2011? Let's put our minds back in 2011 so we can properly ingest this show, 
process it and then regurgitate some sort of rating at mm-hmm. the end. I don't want to go into this. You know, sooner sooner than later, we're going to go back to the 1950s and we're going to be listening to something. But we can't think about today's standards. We've got to put right. ourselves in the time frame. And one of the things that happened in 20, uh, 2011 is the Occupy Wall Street movement began on September 17th as a, pro, as a protest meant to highlight income inequality in the United States and the rest of the world. The movement was known uh, was best known for its We Are the 99% slogan referring to income inequality. What do you think about that? Um, or, or are you, you're one of the 99 percenters. Oh, definitely. You're not in the top 1% of earners. No. And are you? Absolutely not. No. no I'm, I'm actually just below 1%. Okay. Um, I'm way below the 1%. No, like... Okay, so we got one percent at the top, right? And then you got a percent at the bottom, right? Right. Like the lowest earners. Oh, lowest of the ninety nine percent. I am in that one percent. Okay. I haven't even exceeded one percent. Right. Um, I remember a lot of people just sitting around and getting arrested once in a while, and just sitting around Wall Street. I don't really. It never. It, it lasted. How long did it last? Did it say? But it doesn't say. But I feel like it. Nothing happened. No, nothing really happened. It was just. It was basically a. Um, like a music festival without the music. Right. People just gathering to smoke weed and be disgusting hippies. And then you get a cool mixture because it's in big cities that would happen. You get a cool mixture of like hobos that would intermingle with all the uh, hippies and stuff. Right. And and there was like, and then they sprinkle in some like real activists who like, that's their life's work. But all those people that were protesting, mm-hmm. um, the reason why they're part of the 99% is they're not going to work. Where's your job, sir? Where is your job? Right. All those people, I mean, this lasted weeks. How much is popping your Coleman tent in the city park paying you per day to be there? Not Nothing. much. Nothing. I mean, we we have a podcast. We entertain people every week. That's right. And we have Air Force One. Mm-hmm. We employ three people besides right. ourselves. Yeah. And we don't make any money. No, we, we do it for the love, for the passion that we have. We fly. That's oh, how we make our money. Man. All right, the we wind in our hair. Love it. I love. I love getting up there, rolling down the windows, <laughs> letting that air blow right through. Something I always every, every time I roll down the window, I get like this gauge that says uh, cabin pressure. I don't know what it means. It's mm. ne- it's never really come up or affected anything we do. But I love that wind in the hair. Right. And once in a while, I started getting a nosebleed, and I'm like, hey, can you roll that up? Because that whistling sound. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that'll do it. But, it. It really dries out your nose, and it's like. Mm. Uh, but but the feeling of that wind, right? I mean, come on. Uh, singer Amy Winehouse dies on July 23rd. R.I.P.? Should have stayed in rehab, right? She should have stayed in rehab. Um, and it's one of those things like everybody's like, oh, she was an amazing singer. She had amazing songs. Mm-hmm. Um, if she wouldn't have died, and this this happens with every rock star. But you're going to say Cobain, I know you uh, Kurt Cobain, right? Um, Jimi Hendrix. Buddy Holly. Um... <sighs> What's the woman? Eric Edelstein. What's the woman who... Re- Jan- Janis Joplin. Yeah. Are, were they, would they really... Even Hank Williams. Elliot, yeah. Elliot Gould. Right. Um, Liberace. hmm If they hadn't died at such an early age, would they still be revered as so amazing? I don't think so. Amy Whitehouse, you didn't go to rehab, and this is the payment you get. Well, let me, let me ask you this. But when you say... Uh, when you say... Cobain, I think I think about grunge music. I think about uh, like Pearl Jam. They were definitely categorized as grunge at the time. They definitely had that look. And he is if he, if Pearl Jam is not, they will be in the Hall of Fame. They are kind of a legend of rock. Do you not agree with that statement? That they are kind of, they are iconic and a legend of rock and roll. Their guys are out there still doing it. I couldn't tell you the last album they put out or the last hit they had. Right? Um, my chair is creaking. Okay, that's that's what you get when you buy Air Force One. Right. Um. I think they had a significant. They were they were the right place at the right time. The grunge started. They are they got stamped with that as you know the the forefathers of grunge. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I would I would agree with that too because I think Mother Love Bone was a, 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 one of the uh, original grunge bands. That was that was a band. Mother Love Bone, yeah. And the guy and, and Andy something died of heroin. I want to say, but two of the members of Pearl Jam were in Mother Love Bone. And I think two guys came from somewhere else, but it was just kind of the perfect, you're right, the perfect time, the perfect mixture of people coming together. And we're, we're still talking about um, Eddie Vedder to this day. He just sang at the Cubs game when they were winning the World Series. Well, because right? he's got nothing else to do but go to the Cubs game. I don't know. I, I think you're right about, about some of these people. You, you get a couple good albums, and then they die, 
and they have no time in their life to, <clears throat> to screw anything up. Right, they, they don't go on a legacy. downward, mm-hmm. a downward, downworld spurled. <laughs> you look so disappointed in yourself. I am because I tried it twice. <laughs> downward spurled. <laughs> okay. Um, the popular band REM announces they are breaking up after 31 years. Thank I, God. Do you like? Do you say thank God? Yeah, I'm gonna move, move past that. I like REM. Um, Canadian Russell Brand and singer Katy Perry file for divorce at the end of the year. And you know what? Uh, up to that point, I was like, maybe someday I'll get married. Maybe not. When it's when it was announced that they were getting divorced, I was like, if they can't make it, who can? Right. Exactly. A comedian, a, a huge pop star. If they can't coincide with each other, what's the point of living? What is the point? Ugh. I don't, I don't okay. How old were you in the year 2011 when this pilot was released? 36? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I was 30 years old. God, I was so scared I was going to get it wrong. <laughs> Math is tough, right? <laughs> Math is super tough. Because cause you have well, a number, and then you have to subtract another number. But and then you have, like, to convert, you have to convert your age into years, and then, like, I was born in this, and you get to minus that off, and then, you know. And depending on what side of the border on, you're looking at the metric system versus standard. Exactly. I don't. My head just starts spinning. I can't do it. Why did we choose to watch What's Going On with Mike Mitchell? There's three simple criteria. We'll go through this pretty fast. Uh, one, it was a failed pilot. It never went to series. Only one episode was made. That's the first one. Second, it had to be readily available. We had to be able to find it. We can't talk about something if we can't see it. That's right. It's like a ghost. You won't catch me talking about ghosts. I'm just a ghost in this house. I'm just a shadow upon these walls. As quietly as a mouse, I haunt these halls. And so the third one is it had to be free. We are not paying for this shit. No. We, how, you know how much debt we're in? Oh, just in gas alone. In gas, in DSJ, in golden cones, in D batteries, in Air Force One. I'll write the number down if you want to see it. No, I don't want to see it. It's okay. a depressing. I know what it is. I don't want to physically okay. see it. Can you it. send it to me? I'll send you the number. Okay. That's fine. Um, and you know what? There, there is a fourth, and you like to refer to it. I think I called it a phantom once, and, I, and you've mm-hmm. latched onto that and right. loved it ever since. This is actually kind of a hallmark for us because this is our 51st episode. It's our last episode of season five. Mm. And up to this point, we did a, a decade of the 70s, a decade of the 80s, 90s, the aughts, and now the 2010s. Is, is, and this is the last one wow. we're doing for the 10s. Is. We're going to wrap around and hit some more. But going forward, it's going to be a little bit of a hodgepodge. We're going to jump around different So we're going to get loose and goose. We're going to get real loose and goosey. You know, it's kind of like um, all the big shows that lasted five, six, seven seasons, like Friends. Yeah, Friends. Seinfeld. Love it. Mash. Seen every ep. They, you know, they got loose. Oh, yeah, they got a little loose. Because after, right. after season five, that's your syndication money, right? Oh, yeah, cha-ching. You reach 100 episodes, and now it's time for cable to start showing reruns, and those sweet, sweet zids start rolling in. And guess what? Same thing's going to happen for us. Oh, yeah. We're going to get closer and closer to that 1% those Wall Street kids were yelling about. You know what? And when we get there, we're not going to forget the little people. No. Like Richard, Lori, Conrad, mm-hmm. Big E, Dustin. I wouldn't call Big E little. Well, we'll definitely forget about Shemansky. I will forget him, probably, okay. for sure. I'm just kidding. I love him. I know you're not kidding, but I did. <laughs> I definitely am. Where can you find what's going on with Mike Mitchell to watch for yourself? You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots and iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or you can go to YouTube and you know what to do. Right. You I mean, but if you want to do that without clicking our classically blue link, I mean, that's up to you. If something happens, it's not our fault. Yeah, I think if you read our bylaws, you'll clearly <coughs> see that... Our anything, Bible laws? That's right. If you read our biblical laws, you'll you'll understand that if you click anything outside of our show notes, we cannot be held responsible. Yeah. We run our all of our links through a th- very thorough check to make sure that it's very safe for you. It's a digital condom, as we've called it. Love so, it. Love digital condoms. I think... I think Richard needs to make sure he's wearing a digital condom because Lori is way too beautiful to, and Jesus, man. <laughs> to want to have a baby with look, you. Look, does it does it feel good to click a link without a digital condom? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the best. Is it safe, though? No. No, not even close. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. Getting close to that super moon. This new plane... The acoustics are completely different now. It's weird. Yeah. Whew. See you, John. See you on the other side. Yep.
He's, he's wearing that stupid Trump hat. Make great, make America great again. It's not so much that it's stupid, but it's ill-fitting, which makes him look stupid. Right. Um, he doesn't have it like snapped on the right snap, and he, so it's yeah. not even snug. It's just like sitting on his head. Well, he said it's like a one size fits all, but it clearly isn't because it's got the snaps on right. the back. And he's got a huge head. Massive melon on that boy. Summary of the pilot. Mike Mitchell gets his big break. The chance to host his own talk show on TV, but there's a catch. We're not telling him who the guests are going to be or what comedy bits we have planned or even what's written on the cue cards. He'll never know what's going on until it happens. Great summary. That's an amazing summary. That's better than the summary that I wrote. You got a summary? Yeah. Hit me. Uh, this is our first, our first talk show. Um, while, while what you said is not untrue... I would say, yeah, this the one I read is is probably a little bit more thorough, sure. is, it's, but still summarizing. You you taking it up, and you're you're doing all the stuff in the middle. Are we started with the middle stuff? Because I haven't really paid attention yet. Interesting facts. Ooh. Okay. Interesting facts section of the show where we dig deeper. We give you behind the scenes information, and then that's it. I just read them to you, plain Jane. You take them in, and that's it. Yeah. There's plenty of things that could be said, but we're not going to say them. And I expect you at home not to be saying them either. Right. I, I We've talked about this a hundred times. Don't post on our Twitter page, mm-hmm. at Couch Pilots Pod. Don't go on to Facebook, our Facebook page, Couch Pilots Podcast, and write about how stuff is interesting. These facts are interesting. Don't call don't, into the new number and do that. Don't send oh, a don't, stalemate. Don't call into 1-910-PILOTS-1. Don't do that and say, oh, those facts you guys gave were interesting. It's, it's a waste of time. That doesn't – who cares what you think about it? These facts are set in stone. Doesn't has, quantify. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything what you're saying about it. We're not going to comment on them. It would just be a waste of your time to do it. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. I get, I get so fucked up. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, stars Mike Mitchell, a comedian that performs with the UCB, which is – do you know what that stands for? Up, upright Citizens Brigade. Yep. And is a member of the comedy troupe, The Birthday Boys. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. I've heard of The Birthday Boys. I've seen a couple of things, but I didn't recognize. I didn't put two and two together, but that's pretty interesting. God damn it. Okay. All right. Let's stop right there for a second. Let's, let's rewind. I mean, this is, I, I work off a spreadsheet here, and I've got five interesting facts. I don't, I don't know why you're snidely whiplashing me, boy. I tell you what, I've got five different facts. We can't get through one goddamn fact without you commenting on it. How long has it been? You were doing so good. You had a real hot streak. I know, almost a whole season. A whole, almost a whole season without doing it. And here it goes, just letting the floodgates <clears throat> open, huh? Some, it, it must be the, the gravitational pull. Oh, yeah, it must be that. Yeah, it must be that. Yeah, it must be the super moon, right? Must be DSJ down there with his hat. I don't know who you think you are commenting on these facts. You and I just ran Sorry. the listeners up through it. And now you have the unmitigated right off the bat. Right too. off the bat, I didn't like. Usually, it's like the third or fourth fact, but you should just be sh- shutting up right now okay. and taking it. But you are you're like almost basking in it right now. Just like, I can't, I couldn't even hold it for one. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Sorry, can you just do the next one? No, I'm not going to do the next. No, one. No, you have to. You, I'm not. I'm going to say that you and I have met one of the birthday boys before. You remember that? Oh yeah, it's a comedy bang bang live TV show. The guy that plays John Lennon. I think there's like three. There's like two or three mics in the Birthday Boys, of which there might be seven to nine members. Yeah, we've I, got four mics here. His name is Mike. No, I'm sorry, Michael. Like the oh, name okay, Michael, okay, not, okay. not microphones. All right, good catch though. Uh, Mike Hanford, I think is his yeah. name. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we met him, and I took a picture. They said, "Hey, um, you can't stop and take pictures with anyone." Sure. I said, "Okay, well, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a quick little picture from the side before I meet anyone because I don't want to hold up the line. Right. I want to listen to them. I took two pictures." And I, w- I waited for you to talk to Lauren Lapkus uh, because I know you have a two ton mega boner crush on her. Mm-hmm. And so I took it. I took a couple of pictures, and one of them I got Mike Hanford in it, looking at me like, "Why the fuck are you taking a picture?" <laughs> well, guess what, Mike? I don't get to meet comedians all the time right. that I, I, I really enjoy their podcasts. And my buddy's rocking a, a, a rock hard diamond uh, meta milk boner. Meta milk boner for sure. Well, I'm going to sneak a picture real quick. I'm not going to say, hey, can I come behind the table and do a selfie? Sure, I didn't sure. do that shit. Right. I just stepped out of line before it was my turn to talk to anyone. Right. And I took a photo, and he gave me a death stare. But that's cool. That's cool. I told him he did a great job. I told him I had a lot of fun. Yeah, he only does one character, but that's great. Originally began as a live show at the UCB Theater in Los Angeles. This show? Yeah. Okay. So this is something they would do because 
I think once you're at the UCB, which is like, like a school for improvs, mm-hmm. a school for comedians. Yeah, we right? thought about going there. We th- we've thought about it. We've flown over it several times. Sure. And we drop our business cards down right. out the plane. That's when we roll out the window with the, hair, the wind through our hair. Uh, but it's a UCB, for those who don't know, it's a school. And they have a couple in Los Angeles and they got a couple in New York. And people go there and they pay a pretty hefty fee to be taught improv. And improv, I think, can come useful in a lot of different parts of your life. Mm-hmm. But a lot of these people, I think, are aspiring comedic actors. Yes. Yeah. And uh, once once you're there for a while, you can kind of move up the ranks, and these guys uh, culminate together as the birthday boys, and every once in a while you come up with an idea, and you can have like a reoccurring show out there, and I think this is one of those shows that they did in front of a live studio audience. Oh, cool. Okay. You're doing well so far. I know I can – it's really yeah. – uh, like your eyes are just welded shut. I think you cannot. <laughs> I don't know. If you're concentrating so hard and not commenting on these facts. Produced by Funnier Die, which is you know who's Funnier Die, Will Ferrell, and uh, what's that guy's name? Ah, on a good day, I know it. <clears throat> the Jewish guy, not Judd Apatow. That's why I really no. want. I really want to say Judd. Apatow. It's not him though. It's the guy who like directed Step Brothers and all. The guy who always works with. Yeah. God damn, I can't remember his name. Um, and it, it was passed on by the FX channel. FX it, eh. No thanks. Eh. Um, Mike, the star of the show, genuinely does not know what's about to happen in the show. Oh, really? That is, it, nothing was scripted. It is all, he really doesn't know what's happening. Oh, cool. Um, really writing that line for me. Uh, college Humor was accused of ripping off the premise for the show's uh, midnight talk show prank and the MTV version, Middle of the Night Show. Never no, heard of both. Nothing, one of those. I've never heard of those either. I haven't watched MTV in probably fifteen years. Um, Not since the quit playing the White Lion song video. Wait, yeah, and for me it was when John Sencio signed off for that final time. Oh. Did you want me to sing part of Wait? Oh uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Wait, <laughs> go ahead. Right, you know what? Let's wrap up the interesting okay, facts okay. section with you saying with you singing. Wait, <clears throat> go right. Ahead. Oh, there's no more interesting That's facts. It. Wrap it up. Wait, wait. I never had a chance to love you. Now I only want to say I love you one more time. Kind of wish I told you you couldn't do that. <laughs> uh, this show is built on the backbone of my singing ability. Oh, I guess. So uh, the next uh, portion of the show, which we don't do every show, is called Twitter Responses. We oh, Twitter responses, Twitter responses. This is where we read some Twitter responses. Yes. We say who are the writers, who are the creators, who are the directors, and the stars of any given pot or any given uh, pilot that we watch. We send them out a tweet, and sometimes we get tweets back. Mm-hmm. And in this case, we did. Uh, we sent something to Jack Allison, who is the, one of the head writers, and he's also worked on shows like uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live. And we sent something. He says, "You know what?" Sure, I'll give you some tidbits. Go ahead and direct message me, which I didn't know for a long time what DM meant. I know now it's direct message. Sure. And we did. We did exactly that. So we sent him something, and it says, hey, um, thanks for taking the time. We look forward to any insight or stories you have about the pilot. Nothing. Today. We're recording tonight. If you get a chance, can you hit us up before 6 p.m. CST, Central Standard. Central Standard. Uh, So we can include your comments slash insight on tonight's recording. Thanks again. Uh, don't mean to sound so pushy. Right. I did, I, I, when I, I wrote that part, I just didn't want to seem pushy. Yeah, why not? Um, so tomorrow, he'll, he'll, he'll tweet us tomorrow, and we, will, we, won't, we won't be able to. We'll bring it, it, if he does get back to us, which I hope he does. And sure. It, and if he doesn't, then he probably shouldn't have said he would. Uh, but it, as soon as he does, we will mention it on, our, on the, the nearest episode to yep. the time. Yep. So uh, thank you for getting back to us at all. And with that, we're going to take a quick break. And we're going to listen to a promo for one of my favorite shows, and that is uh, Drunken Lullabies. Hi, this is The Voice from Drunken Lullabies. Do you like craft beer, indie music, pop culture, pro wrestling, and pure juvenile hijinks? Then you will love Drunken Lullabies on the FCF Network. We have new episodes every Sunday, so you can... I don't know what happened. Hi, 
Hi, this is The Voice from Drunken Lullabies. Do you like craft beer, indie music, pop culture, pro wrestling, and pure juvenile hijinks? Then you will love Drunken Lullabies on the FCF Network. We have new episodes every Sunday, so you can spend the Sabbath getting drunk with us. So join me and my co-host, Beer Mansky, and our rotating cast of characters as we drink amazing beer, listen to bands we think you need to know, and laugh our asses off. Like Elvis said, 10,000 drunken maniacs can't be wrong. Check us out on all podcast platforms and at fcfnetwork.com. May your music be loud and your beers be cold. And we'll find ourselves in the same old mess singing drunken lullabies. Now, again, new plane, Air Force One, not used to it. I'm going to have to go back and look um, at the manual and Lin see. Lin-Manuel. Yes, Lin-Manuel, cocaine dealer extraordinaire, mm-hmm. um, and see what happened there. I think we, we had a, a full a – full, you know what? What happened where? What do you mean with the promo? Yeah, we the had – folks at home didn't hear that, did they? Well, I th- you're gonna leave it in, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it in. I said, are you gonna are you gonna cut that? And you're like, yeah, you're not gonna cut it at all. <laughs> no, I, well, because I think people need to realize that this is a real thing. Like the gravitational pull from the supermoon is what caused the electricity to go out. You know what? I was kind of poking funny there, but I apologize. You're right. It's uh, you know, pe- but buddy, when you poke fun at me, I know it means you love me. You're, absolutely, I do love you. I will say, I will preface everything by that I love you, but. We're real guys, you know. We're not in some. Uh, I mean, we are in a very fancy plane. Oh, yeah. but but we're not like we're just average professionals uh, when it comes to this audio equipment. We're just having fun. <coughs> Whoops! And just because something screws up doesn't mean we're not gonna we're not gonna edit everything out and, and cut and paste things. This is real life. Let the ball play it as it lies. You know what I mean? Yep, that's my favorite part of golf. Favorite part of golf. So let's dig into. Let's do it. Let's dig into this shit. What's going on with Mike Mitchell? The intro, real quick. Um, it kind of shows Mike Mitchell being kidnapped and real quick cut scenes, and it's Mike Cassidy, who is not from the Birthday Boys, I don't believe, but he is. He was in the band Don't Stop or You Die or Can't Don't Stop or We'll Die. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was the third, I think. Okay, and then he's also he's a keyboard player, probably. And he's been in a lot of little things. I think he was in the show Love with Paul Rust, who was his bandmate, and he's in a lot of little. He's popped up here and there. He's on Comedy Bang Bang on occasion. Um, but he uh, he's kind of narrating this intro, saying, mm. here's the premise of the show. Deal with it. Right. This is how it is. Yeah. Kind of like we do at the beginning of the show. It, right. And it, it, it kind of – it says it, – it plays it off like Mike Mitchell's not a comedian. It almost plays it off like he's just a regular, just a regular dude that they can – A regular have. Joe that they just pull out of his apartment and, and put him in a van. And honestly, knowing that he is a comedian – and I think this was shot – after the first season of the Birthday Boys, because they had two epi- two seasons on IFC, um, I would say he's not playing it like he's a comedian. Like some of the shit that happens during the show, it's like you should be funnier and better prepared for this. Right. And if you're playing it off like you're just a regular guy, don't because people people will pick up on the fact that it is not genuine. Right. You know, if you're a, a real comedian and you went up through UCB and you're part of this group, I, I say play on that. And maybe I'm digging way too far into it right now, but it seems like they were trying to play it off as he was just some dude off the street. Right. Did you feel the same? I, I felt the same. So Mike Cassidy announces for the show, and he does he does a lot of stuff throughout the show, like kind of segueing into things or cutting to commercial. Yeah, he kind of he kind of keeps the show flowing. Absolutely, because obviously, because Mike doesn't know what's going on, Mm-mm. and so he's he keeps the flow of the show. He knows there's crunch time. He sees that t- he sees that 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 clock. You yeah. know that they need. I, I I watch our clock all the time. You're the, I, Mike, you're the Mike Cassidy. You're the announcer uh, of Couch Wilds. Yeah, and I used to like pay attention, but now I'm like, fuck it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not right. Let it the down. play it as it lies. Right. We're 43 minutes in, and we haven't even talked about it. So it's got a nice little set, right? Oh yeah, it's a nice little set they got going on for him. Um, Mike is handed cards many times during the show, saying, here's what's next, here's what we want to talk about, or Here, here's the next bit we're doing. And the first time he's handed cards is for the monologue. Yeah, uh, the Team Mike. Yeah, he's he got a couple guys wearing black shirts that say Team uh, Team Mike on it, and they're there to help him out, mm-hmm. keep him moving. Uh, so they do that, and he, he, he does a couple of jokes. They're kind of topical jokes, which a monologue usually is. And I'm, I'm thinking, I know the cards physically represent – that he doesn't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that plays into, oh, I'm, I'm being handed this, and now I read it. But when he's staring down at the cards the whole time and not up at the camera, it takes you out of it, and it looks shitty. Right. Like, what they could have done, 
um, is just had cue cards, and then they just take the first blank one away, and now he has to read it. Right. That's, that would definitely would have been what to do. You know, or they could have given him those, you know, for the TV purposes. Mm-hmm. But like I said, had the had the cue cards to help them out. But I mean, I, I think that them handing it to them it plays into the fact that it's you don't He's, know because I mean he, it's cueing it's cueing the audience to hey here's something that's about to happen that he has doesn't know about. You know, I think what they could have done too is, is like I said, have real cue cards so he's kind of looking in the direction of the camera, like like you know, the professionals like a Jimmy Fallon or a Jimmy Kimmel, what they're doing, they're looking at cue cards, right. right? But it looks like they're looking at the camera, sure, and and, and they are a little bit, but they're kind of going back and forth, kind of like on Saturday Night Live too. But on this show, what they could have done, and in my eyes should have done, is maybe had the cue cards, but right before, like kind of in between jokes, they kind of shoot like a quick shot of the guy holding the cue cards. Right. And so so you know that he hasn't seen them before. But, see, but at the same time, it looks it looks good when he's looking at the camera. Exactly. It seems like something we would, we would go over in the turbulence section. You're right, and I'm sorry. And I will um, – my deepest apologies to you. No, it's okay. So – He's doing the monologue. He's reading some jokes. They're they're not very good jokes. But and then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh, uh, now it's time for me to sign my contract." And you know the guy comes out, gives him some a bunch of papers, and you know with little tabs on it, yep. little lawyer tabs where you're supposed to sign. He just signs it and he doesn't read it at all. Right. He does, he just goes right through it, and and I believe it probably is his real contract. Right. I mean, <laughs> why not? Right. And then he goes to the desk, and he's handed some more cards, and they say, okay, here, here's a quick bit we did. And obviously the bit was pre-taped, so he knows that he had done it, but he didn't know where in the show they were going to insert that. Exactly. But it was right here. But he did kind of act like he, I don't know, he did kind of act like, oh, I forgot all about this. I, you guys kidnapped me after the fact. Well, you're not going to, I don't know how he could have <clears throat> forgotten about this. No, God, I can't even. He's blindfolded, and they got a camera on him. And they take. He's like, "I'm here at this," and they takes his blindfold off, and he's on a porn set. Right there's a there's a naked girl and a naked guy sitting in a bed, and yep. it's the uh, it's the set for Fresh Out of High School. Oh, great series! Oh, great series! I've seen a lot of porn in my time. Yeah, and Fresh Out of High School thirteen is my favorite. Top one percent. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so they go to the porn set, and there's, he's like, oh, this is real awkward. Uh, and then they they uh, cut to him sitting on a fully clothed – well, they're, they're fully clothed, the woman is. And they're reading lines. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it is bleeped out. Right. It's like he's saying the dirtiest, nastiest <clears throat> shit that uh, the guy would say, and then they switch roles. Right. So with the girl, he's like, you know, I want to beep you, and I want to beep your beep, and yeah. I want to go down and gnaw on your beep. Right. You know? I'm going to go all Richard, don't call him dick on you. Yeah, I'm going to spread open your beep and really unload inside of your beep. And then right. they're going to beep all over your face. Uh, right. <laughs> I want to smack your beep and make yeah. you call me daddy. I want to get you down on your knees and then put my beep in your mouth. and then Right. And then and then when I'm beeping you from behind, I'm yeah. going to punch you in the back of the neck. I'm going to beep all in your hair and make oh. you have to go to the hair salon the next day. And I'm going to videotape us beeping each other. Yeah. A lot of that. <laughs> Pretty much a lot of that. Right. And then and then he, they switch and then he's sitting on the bed with the guy and, and he and Mike is reading the the woman's roles and then it sounds a little something like this. Well, oh, I want you to eat my beep. Yeah. I'm gonna so blow your beep. I'm gonna go I'm not, down and yeah. beep your beep. Your beep and beeper. Yeah, I'm gonna wrap my hands around your beep and slowly uh, slap my face with your beep. Yeah, really bruise up my face. Loosen <laughs> loosen a tooth. <laughs> I never understood that. Even when it's been done to me, I don't understand it. Whacking your dick in somebody's face. I mean, he said when it's done to you. What is that? What is whole lot of no? Second. I mean, when the girl is whacking my penis on her face, it doesn't make sense. Oh, okay. I thought, I thought you meant like someone's doing that to you. No, I mean I'm not judging. <laughs> oh yeah, you are. We're in international air, so we're we're in a judge free zone. You know, it, you, while we're doing the stuff in the middle. It's judge free, but when I take it down, you bet. Yeah, we have the same conversation. You bet I'm going to. Right. Judge I'm, well, I'm trying to drive and talk about a show at the same time. So, um, and they all then all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, our boom mic guy um, called in sick. Will you hold the boom? Have you ever dealt with a microphone? Um, something I noticed that you would not have noticed is they're using a Zoom H4n as we are using in the studio. I definitely did not notice, and kudos to you for noticing. That's awesome. <laughs> I saw it. I wrote it, scribbled it down real quick. I was like, <laughs> I want to see the half naked girl with everything bl- blurred out, but I still want to write this down. What would you do to that girl? 
Oh, I would bleep all over her. Yeah, that's right. You know what I would do? Is I would take my tongue and bleep it in her bleep, mm-hmm. and then turn her around, bleep it in her bleep, and then kiss her. But I would. <laughs> oh, okay, that trumps everything I was going to say. Um, so he's he's holding the mic, and um, they're they're really going at it. Oh yeah, it's really happening, and he's kind of like looking at it and then looking away, and just kind of like right. It's it's the kind of thing where it's like you know he'd be very happy watching this on his computer at home, but when he's doing it in person, it probably is a little off putting. Yeah, that's kind of like a threesome. Like, you know, there's another dude naked, and you're both banging the same chick. Right. It's like it's you don't you don't want to watch the two of them bang because you're standing right there. And we will say Mike was not naked. No, not at all. He was he was dressed very well. He says uh, he says you guys are doing great <laughs> job. <laughs> yeah, he that, that he may tr- have been the best part of that. He tried to feel uncomfortable. Um, He's trying. And then oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just say, yeah, probably what you're going to say they're trying to come up with the porn name. Right. He he needed a name for the credits because he was going to be in the credits because he ended up being the boom mic guy. And they come up with Zip Donovan. Yeah, Zip Donovan, <laughs> uh, which they did not like. And, and at this point, too, I'm looking at him, and he's holding the mic, and he's giving those kind of weird faces. He looks like a fat Gilbert Godfrey. That's what he looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. With his, because his face is all scrunched up, like, oh, I don't want to see this. I don't want to see her D go in his wee. I don't want to be slapped in the face like Captain Philip rest assured. <laughs> um, Slap in the face. Slap in the face, man. <laughs> <laughs> great, great Paul Rudd bit. Thanks. Um, they go back to the set after the bit. The crowd loves it. The, and honestly, the crowd does seem to be really on board with the sure, show. Sure. They seem to be excited. It's almost like it's all of his high school friends, and they're like, damn it, Mike, you did it. Yeah. We're so happy. Oh, all this right. is incredible, man. You're doing it. He's back behind the desk, and he says, you know what time it is? It's time for... Sorry. Commercial break. Commercial break. That's right. So what? Usually we do better at that. Oh, I was going to say first guest. Oh. And it was. After the commercial break, it was their first guest. He doesn't know who it is. He has no idea he who really, it is. He really genuinely does not. And the other guy. Mike was, Cassidy. Mike Cassidy says, and now, you know, you, you, you have no idea. Most, your most famous person. You've seen him in old school. Right? Right. You've, Anchorman. You've seen, yeah. He's, you've seen him in Step Brothers. I, I knew exactly who it was when he said Anchorman. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Ferrell, the one and only Will Ferrell, and it was really him. It really, it truly was. He comes out. He has a, he kind of an awkward handshake and hug. They go. He goes to the desk, and this is my favorite part. Um, all the cards that are being delivered to Mike are being uh, delivered via Team Mike or Team Mitch, whatever the shirt says. And um, they keep handing him cards, and they keep they keep running in like giving coffees, right? And keep backing away. And I thought that was funny. That was it, funny. it was totally unnecessary that they're doing it, but it was a really it was funny. Because usually, you know, in, in real late night, it's already there. It's already there. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, him and Will start talking, and he's he's you know he's taken back. He's starstruck. Sure. Of course you would be. And I, but honestly, I have to think at this point if if Funny or Die is producing this, then and if Will Ferrell's kind of at the helm of uh, Funny or Die, then they probably have met before in some capacity, and they may have had some dealings with each other. Which, which Bill, Will Ferrell's a huge name, right? What kind of dealings. Like, hey, uh, I like your shorts that you do. And not, you're not your physical shorts oh, that you're okay. wearing as your pants, but I like the shorts. Let me take you, those shorts off you. Yeah, and... let me take those shorts off you and let me produce something. You know, let's let's get something going. Maybe I can stick your bleep in my bleep. You know? Oh, or slap your bleep on my bleep, you bleep. Well, Farrell says, um, it, it's, it's funny and interesting that you're having me here because I'm kind of the first guest curse on right. talk shows. Uh, Conan's show ended on The Tonight Show. Um, Megan Mullally had a show, and you've probably never heard of that. I know I haven't. Right. John McEnroe, the famed... I didn't know he had a show either. I don't know how he... He gets a ton of mileage. I don't know. It, right. John McEnroe... It's amazing. He keeps popping up. But all these guys had um, talk shows that either ended abruptly or maybe only had one episode, like Mike Mitchell here. Right. And, and, and I the, think that the was curse the, continues. That was kind of... That was kind of tied into it. I think they knew there was one of these. Oh, you think so? Maybe. So, you know, they, they keep talking, and... Um, you know, it, for for the most part, it had a good interview feel. For the most part, with, uh, Farrell, and you'll find it with the second guest as well. But Farrell really takes control of the interview. Yes, definitely. And he, he helps him because Will Farrell has been through this circuit a million times. He knows kind of he knows the score, and but he takes control because he knows Mike isn't necessarily prepared for, which he wouldn't be prepared for anyone. Right. But at the same time, he doesn't have a lot of experience as a talk show host outside of anything he's done at the UCB. Right, and, but. I would think, and maybe this is more a turbulent section kind of thing, and you think with all the improv training, he would have something to talk about or yeah. something to do. He does not. Right. And so Will Ferrell's like, so what did you do before this? You know? And Mike's like, well, I, I, I worked as the assist, uh, assistant on Simpsons. And yeah. he, he's like, it was pretty boring. Yeah. 
It's, it's, it's kind of lame, but it's it's fun to see him starstruck, and you're kind of rooting for him, but at the same time, he's not doing a great job. All right. More cards are handed, and it's time for a bit. This, Ooh. this bit is called... Um, Save your bed. Yeah. And so they go outside, where there is... There's no idea. No idea. Outside, you get a steamroller, about, I don't know, 40 feet away from his bed setup. It's not just his bed. It's like the frame, and I think a nightstand, too. Right. There's like a, a lamp the out there. pillows and lamp. Every, it's it's fully made bed. They go outside, and um, Mike Cassidy's out there, the announcer. He says, hey... Uh, Mike Mitchell, Will Ferrell, here's a pile of clothes that's all um, pajamas. You have to find a matching pair before the steamroller hits the bed or your real-life bed will be destroyed right on camera. Because – You all right? Yeah. It's like gravity. It, it, it's gravitational pull. Super uh, Moon Yon. <coughs> Super Moon Yon. Oh, man. Did you ever watch Punky Brewster? Soleil uh, Moon Fry? Uh-huh, yeah. Super Moon Fry? I was thinking more along the lines of a porn name. Oh. That was a porn I used to watch. Munion? Yeah. Oh, like an Asian porn? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Zucky, zucky. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so, yeah, they said that, that earlier in the day, they had their, their, his roommate had let them in, and they took his bed. Yep. They took it. and they. Had, how long did they kidnap him? What's that? How, how long did they kidnap him? From they, the- they were very sketchy on those decan okay. details. They're, they, there's no timer. It's just whenever this uh, steamroller happens to hit, that's the amount of time you have. So they're sorting kind of casually. Right. There was no franticness at all. I would have been whipping. I would have been just spreading the pile out. Right. Colors yeah. by colors. Yeah, spreading the whole thing out and then look at. I feel like at the end there, he had red on, like he was holding a red one and there's a red one on the ground right by him. <laughs> so we, I feel like we could have saved his bed pretty easily. They did not. No. They failed the physical challenge. Um, it was amazing to see a steamroller go over a bed. Steamrollers are always good. I'm a steamroller baby. I like to roll all over you. I love that song. Yeah. So the bed is destroyed. He has nowhere to sleep. Uh, but guess what? He got to hang out with Will Ferrell and play sure. a game. Who, who can say that, right? Exactly. So uh, after that, they take a commercial break. Then commercial they come break. back for it with another pre-shot thing. Where it was kind of a He's sitting at a table, again, blindfolded. He says, I'm about to interview someone about being a talk show host. Right, giving some tips on how yeah. to be, be a good talk show host. Yeah. And there, you know, the camera's panned just on him as he's talking. Mm-hmm. Takes off the blindfold. She, uh, the camera goes out. Who is it? Larry King. Legendary uh, interviewer, Larry King. They're at some bagel joint, which makes sense because Larry King's the oldest Jew on the planet <laughs> and, they, and they love bagels and schmear. And um, uh, Mike makes Larry cry. As Angelina Jolie, he's like, here, practice on me. I'll be Angelina Jolie. You right. can ask me questions. And I had heard an uh, interview with Larry King a couple years ago with, I think, Norm MacDonald interviewed him. And Larry King's kind of a prick, just in general. Right. And, and he's a little bit of a prick to this guy, too. Um, but I feel like Larry King will talk to anyone, too, because who the hell's Mike Mitchell? And they sit down with a, uh, you know, a broadcasting Ooh. legend like Larry King. So I don't know. Anyway, they talk for a little bit, and he says, "I pretend I am Angelina Jolie. You can talk to me." So he asks him some questions. It's very sloppy. He's always, Mike Mitchell's always putting his head down when he's kind of embarrassed or stymied right. by his own progress. A couple of the tips that Larry King gave him is never eat on air. He's the whole time he's shoveling this this bagel yep. down his gullet, and also um, I don't know if he said to say this or never say this. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think he said, do not say okay, that. Okay, so right. I think he immediately said it, and right. then he's like, first thing, don't say what well, well. Right. <laughs> they cut back to the set. The show continues. Time for the second guest. Out walks the young, the beautiful, the hacked pornography on her own phone celebrity. Okay, I'll have to write that down. Did you not know about that? No, I didn't know. Jennifer. Oh, yeah. Are you, you gotta be kidding I, me. I don't, I don't look at porn of celebrities. I want people that I, like, did just you, like grandmas and did stuff. Did you? Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Did you hear about that a couple of years ago? The fappening where all these celebrities had hacked cell phones. Okay. No, no, you know about this. Say you're pulling my leg. I can't believe this. No, I don't. There, there are nude pictures available of Jennifer Lawrence online. Here, we, here, hold this joystick. All right. Just go toward that star. Okay. <laughs> Going to the North Star. We're, we're, like, we're like air slaves, right? <laughs> Oh, uh, she she was and she was a buxom blonde. And you're, and you're googling it. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. She was. She was a buxom blonde. Go get the buxom blonde. Blah 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 blah. Um, everything to me at this point feels heavily edited. There's a lot of cutting back and forth. There's. I it, bet this pilot could have been an hour if they wanted it to. Yeah, I think so too. It, it did. It did lose a lot of the kind of like a homegrown kind of. 
you want it happen on the fly. You want to feel independent. Everybody, I, it's hard, I find it hard to believe that everybody knew, you know, everybody knew, he didn't know anything, mm-hmm. but yet everybody else knew where, you know, what shots to do and everything. Yeah, well, I, again, I think that speaks to how edited it was. I can't imagine seeing the whole thing and how sloppy that must have been. Sure. You know, just, it was I mean, look at our show, for Christ's sake. Heavily sake. edited on the show. Uh, they talk and they say, you know, you're going to be in the X-Men movie where you're playing Mystique. Uh, Will Ferrell and Mike kind of battle back and forth for her attention a little bit. And uh, I, she kind of takes pity on Mike, I feel. Again, she takes control of the interview herself and then kind of feels bad for him, I think, I mean, in, in a bit. Well, and she was talking to him. He was, you know, she felt bad because his bed got ruined. Yeah, and she's like, you can have my bed. And He's I was like, like, I can't do that. I'm I like, would, what, hell yeah, I would. I would just sniff it every night. Do you know how much of her DNA is in that bed? You could create some sort of J-clone in your in your house. Nice. But, um, the end of the show is nigh. Uh, back up. Yep. So they're interviewing Jennifer. You were so you were just looking at pornography on your phone. You weren't even paying attention. Now, I want everybody to watch this. It's pornography you're watching? No, I want everybody to watch this pilot. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because during the interview, you can see she has multiple moles between her tits. And that's why they should watch it? Yeah. <laughs> she was sweet. I thought she was a nice gal. I think people really like her. I she she was always funny when she got on Dave Letterman because she's She's kind of uh, she's got a big mouth. She likes to chat it up with the boys. She sure. likes to be a little dirty and a little raunchy yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they announced the musical guest, and it is Mike himself. Right, I was expecting like Bob Marley. Dead. Oh, what's that guy's name? Um, Leon Russell. Hallelujah. Leonard Cohen. Yeah. Dead. Oh, my bad. Well, yeah, someone else that you thought it would be. John Lennon. Dead. Damn it! I guess I didn't know anything. So he comes around the desk. They start playing. It's kind of a slow, jazzy kind of music, and it's better. So slow is better for when you're trying to make stuff up because you can get into it a little sure. easier. If it was fast paced, it'd be tough for him. And he does an okay job. He kind of wraps up what the show was about. And he sings the end of the show. Is what I what I tell the song. Yeah. And, you know he's he's singing. He's like looking away from the camera. Like is he reading cards or is he not reading cards? I don't know. I don't know either. At the end of the though, he begs FX to pick up the show. Right, he says like, he's like, "I'm 29 years old. I have nothing going for me. You know, Ugh. I don't even have a bed." And then during the credits, uh, Will and and Mike sing together. They yeah. do a little singing for themselves. And you know, Will's going to sing. Will's a singer. He's a singer. He loves it. He loves improv. He loves performing. He's a big ham. Who could blame him? I know that I could not. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. The show did not work. I can think of a few reasons why. Okay. How about you? Well, um, one of the things is it's not gonna, it can't keep going on because the element of surprise is gone after the first episode. How long are you going to be able to be? He has no idea what's going on tonight. You know, the next, next episode, Mike has no idea what's going on. Tonight, I mean... It is fairly gimmicky. Right, and it's not going to last. Talk shows, I think... Oh, you, talk shows are four to five nights a week. Mm-hmm. This the, the gimmick of him doing that night after night would wear thin quickly. Oh, even, even if it was just once a week. Yeah. It, so. it, I, I would have... I would have lost interest on the premise after the first, you know, the first one. Would you go see him do this show at UCB? Oh, yeah. So would I. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it, it would be a bit or a skit. And it's a live thing, and you never know who's coming through the door. Right. And, but it's not like you're tuning into it every week. It's right. just something you'd go see once, maybe twice, ever. Right. But yeah, it's it's very gimmicky. It's something I don't think it would work on TV. It didn't seem... They didn't acknowledge the fact that he was kind of a comedian. He seems like, oh, I'm just this guy who works on The Simpsons... I have a roommate. Well, because they're banking on everybody that's watching it not knowing who he is. But 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 that takes out because I mean you could very easily look into who he is and find out what he's done. Why why leave that to be found out? It seems if you do that, you would be. I don't, I don't know. It seems very disingenuous mm-hmm. to me. And and when you do that, you slap your audience in the face. Oh, slap them right with their <laughs> penis. Uh, I also think that if it were to be a nightly show, um. I don't know, like you couldn't, you know how they say next week we have this guest oh, and this yeah. guest. You, you can never promote You, you who's can't coming. promote, you can't, you can't tease or anything, no. and you can't, because a lot of people, hey, I'm going to watch Jimmy Kimmel because, you know, 
Blake and Jason are on. Yeah, love to watch Blake and Jason. And it's like, oh, I'm going to stay up extra late and watch that episode because I'm really a fan of those people. You know, Wilt Chamberlain is going to be on Conan uh, O'Brien. Dead. What? Jamie. Well, yeah, um, for me, I, I love Saturday Night Live. I'm going to watch every new episode because I love it, and I love to see that kind of comedy come together. I kind of know what takes place behind the scenes a little bit. And so to see the culmination of that and all that work, I don't really care who the host is. Mm. But I think Dave Chappelle was on recently, and I'm sure his numbers were huge. Oh, yeah. He was a guy who disappeared for like 15 years. Right. That's the first TV appearance in forever, yeah. really. So that was probably huge numbers. It's buff, isn't he? He is pretty, pretty ripped. His face looks different. Like That's how like big he is. He's well, face he, his face is different. Oh, and he's older. I think age and the fact that he's yeah. pretty ripped is, is, is catching up with his face. But um, I'm going to watch SNL no matter what. A lot of people are not going to watch a talk show every night, no matter what. They want to watch it for the person that's being interviewed. They want to see, oh, what's Tom Cruise going to say weird about Scientology now? (laughs) I can't wait to see it. But you can't do that with this show because it's a surprise. If it's going to be a a surprise prize, it's a surprise. Absolutely. So if if you're doing it live, like it's if it's uh, being taped at like three or four in the afternoon and then airing at night, you you can't promote who it is or Mike will know. I don't know. And then. Oh, oh, sorry. oh my god! Good <coughs> lord, jeez! You got to stop smoking, man. There is, um, there's also things where it's just like, it's it's slowed down the pace of the show. Like I said, it was heavily edited to the point where you, you could tell it was there's a lot of lulls in there, right. and I don't know. It just it wasn't very smooth, and it's that's kind of the point, but. It's all, it's not funny for very long. There's a lot of cuts. Like normal talk shows don't have that many cuts. I don't think it doesn't seem like no. they do. There's a, there's a, on on talk shows like Carson and stuff. There's a lot of like full screen like where you can even see Ed McMahon over in the corner. I was going to ask uh, Carson Daly or Johnny Carson, but was Ed McMahon ever on Carson Daly show? Mm, I think uh, Ed McMahon's dead. They're all dead. Carson Daly, Johnny Carson. Carson Daly is dead. All of them. They're all dead. Nice. <laughs> it is nice. It's something we've been waiting for. Um, what would you have done to improve this show? <sighs> This was a comedy bit. I was excited because it was a talk show. We, it's our first talk show that we've yeah. done, mm-hmm. like I mentioned in my summary. Yeah, great summary. <laughs> um, I liked that there was Will Ferrell was on it. You know, Jennifer Lawrence, Bucks and Blonde. Um, I Jennifer liked, Lawrence was the Bucks and Blonde. Right. Okay. I liked the porno bit. I thought that was it was it was funny. Another reason you probably wouldn't have that on here, like there was a girl's head bobbing right. on another on another man's coxswain bar, but you I mean you couldn't see the insertion. Sure. But I mean that it was happening. Right, that was how you can't show that on TV. Um, but like I said, it's not it's it can't go anywhere. There's nowhere to grow. Yeah, they they really kind of put up a big wall that's supposed to be oh this is the dominating funny wall but they'll never get over it and that wall is going to get tarnished and dirty and boring quick. Thanks a lot, Donald Trump. Thank you. And you know what? He's going to make Mexico pay for the wall too. Oh yeah. Um, I would. I want to throw this in the adult swim pile. I'm going to yeah. say this could be a show that would last twelve between minutes between two time. ferns kind of mm-hmm. feel to it. I, I want to see an episode. Uh, I would. I would watch this if it was um, ten episodes a season. And it was pre-taped. It's not going to be a nightly thing. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, you know, ten weeks go by. You're going to have a season would, of it. Would you like to watch it if you if like if they just blew away the premise so he didn't know what it was and just have him as a talk show host and, and maybe maybe like play play the dumb guy? You know what I mean? Like playing the like they do they do send him to do different stuff that he doesn't know what's going on. But the remote bits I think are funny with that. And that was, in twelve minutes you could put one. You put one like five minute remote bit, and that would take up most of the show. Sure. I, I think the premise is okay. But it would not work as a nightly show, and it's not going to work as a half hour. It it really wears on me quick. I think twelve minutes, a remote bit, still surprise stuff like that. I think it it could work in that capacity. That's my opinion. It's a good opinion. Thank you so much. Let's begin our final descent. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. Ratings, reviews, things from around the internets that are, are uh, separate from you and I. Right. We, we have our own section coming up. Right. This is uh, IMDb score. Do you have any idea? Did you look? No, I did not look. I haven't been looking because I, I know that you prefer that I don't. I don't care. Either way, it's fine. Oh. What, what do you uh, guess, though, since you didn't? Uh, what do you think? What's going on with Mike Mitchell? 6.3. 8.1. Wow. That is very high. Jesus, I, that's another reason why I don't look anymore because I get it wrong every time. 
That's only that's from really a, high. That's only from eleven ratings. Oh, some of these things have thousands. Some have hundreds. This has got eleven ratings. Uh, critic reviews. Jeremy Solly from Geek Binge says, even after a majority of the pilot was devoted to Mitchell begging for FX to pick up the show, which was not a majority, um, what's going on never made it to air. I'm sure some part of Mitchell was relieved, and he probably wasn't surprised either, though Mitchell had successfully done what's going on as a live show at UCB Theater preceding this. It would have been hard to make it work as a weekly, especially nightly show on FX. It wasn't mainstream friendly, and despite the pilot being funny, it ran the risk of feeling like a one-joke show. But since it wasn't picked up, what's going on doesn't have to worry about things like that and can live on forever as an absolutely insane pilot that is as uncomfortable as it is funny. I wouldn't say it was absolutely insane. I wouldn't That's say it was insane. Extreme. I wouldn't say that the majority of the pilot was him begging right. to pick up. It was about 10 seconds at the end, yeah. which it was It was awkward him doing that, but it wasn't the majority of the pilot. No, um, no viewer reviews. Not a lot of people saw this. By I think on YouTube, which is where we watched it, I, I clicked on a classically blue link to get there personally. Right. I think about three thousand views. But it's only been up for like four months. You're right. It's not been around very long. Not a lot of people have got the chance to watch this. But I hope that you, our frequent flyers, get a chance to watch it. And um, that's really it. There's not a lot of information out there. There wasn't a whole lot of interesting facts. Um, this is just kind of one of those ones that's flying under the radar, uh-huh. and uh, you have to let it you play it where it lies, right? Play it where it lies. Name of this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCA Airport. Local time is 11-11, and the temperature is 69 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. Turn it off. Mm-hmm. You want it off right now? Yeah, go ahead and turn it off. Off. Ratings. Landing. We're at the airport. Our trip essentially is done. Now we just have to take a number and put it on this pilot. Say this is sure. where we rate it. This is where DSJ is, you know, he, we're on the tarmac, mm-hmm. and we're just got to find out what hangar to put it in. Would you please let our frequent flyers and our first-time listeners know about our rating scale? Our rating scale, it's very simple. Mathematically, it makes complete sense. We took one of our favorite, most famous television series wings and we took the seven main characters from that ranked them from one to seven uh number one being um uh, that dirt bag roy biggins roy biggins yeah and that's the worst score we can give the worst. i've given a zero before. bottom of the barrel and then number seven your man Brian Hackett. Brian Hackett. Love him. And then you get all the other famed characters in the middle, all assigned a number. And now we have to look within ourselves, taking all the information in the pilot itself, and then regurgitate a rating. Captain Philip Ressisher, I look to you. How do you rate what's going on with Mike Mitchell? <laughs> Whoops. Um, I Sometimes you watch the pilots, mm-hmm. and you think to yourself, can I see this going further? And if you answer no to that, you you have to reflect that in your score. Mm-hmm. Was it funny? Did I laugh? Yeah. The buxom blonde. There was a porn star blonde. Big and bump. Jennifer Lawrence, who supposedly is naked. Um, so I have to give it a buxom blonde bump. Okay. There, essentially, there's two in there. Right. You the but just actor. one. You, you, you cannot. Okay. You know, there could be seven bucks and blondes. I don't know that you and I have ever watched a pilot that had multiple bucks and blondes. This one does. Sure. I, for all intents and purposes, I would but say it does. One, one point. But one, okay, only one point. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to give it a five. You give it a five. Wow, mm-hmm. okay. Um, I'm going to do you one lower. I'm going to shoot it right down the middle. I'm going to say this is a, a four. Right. And see, I would have said a four, but I had to give the extra point for I don't bucks. always do a bucks and bond, blonde bump. Uh it was my score was heavily influenced by the guests. Um, this is not Will Ferrell at his best, but he, well, he's, he's, he's it's just an afternoon for him. He's trying to help him out, sure. And I, I like seeing Will Ferrell. Jennifer Lawrence is a cute girl. She has um, moles in between her breasts, right? And you just looked at her naked on the internet, so mm-hmm. fantastic. I didn't like her bra on the pictures. That's fine. It's not for everybody, okay. right? It's more about support for the lady, right? I mean, if she sent it to me, then I mean, I wouldn't the, the know, bra or a picture of it, a picture of her with a bra on or off. I wouldn't, you know, shake a stick at it. <laughs> What's an example of something you would shake a stick at? <laughs> like a raccoon <laughs> or a possum. We have time for a story. Sure. <laughs> we always have time. So when I'm not, I mean, we're executive producers. <laughs> time is of the essence. 
when we're not flying through the friendly skies, I work at a hotel. And a lot of times I work second shift. And you know what? I'm not above taking garbage out. Every once in a while, I'll grab a load of garbage and throw it in the dumpster. And I always stomp on the way out to the dumpster because there's, there's raccoons in there. Rubbish burglars, if you will. Ooh. And a lot of times the, those raccoons will hear me coming on purpose because I don't want to startle them. I don't want to get into a rabies-fueled uh, attack. And they will jump out of the dumpster, and there's a gate around it, and they will throw their bodies over the gate. And they will land with a thud, and then they'll run into the woods. Sure. And it's about six foot. So they fall six foot and sure. then run away. Uh, so there's raccoons in the area. So I, uh, a guest comes in and says to some of the people that I have working at the desk, they say, hey – there's a raccoon outside just wandering around the parking lot very casually. I said, okay. So I go out there, and God damn it, if there's not a raccoon just sitting on its ass, hanging out. Is it looking for, like, scraps of food, like, in the parking lot, maybe? I took an apple out there. I rolled it over to him. Upon further inspection, it became very clear to me that this raccoon was blind and deaf. Oh. And I felt really bad for it. So I took a broom out there, and... Um, <laughs> Well, I, I didn't touch him because I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure he is capable of rage still. Sure. And I, 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 I don't, I don't want to hurt the thing. Uh, time will have – it's probably dead by now. I mean those kind of things do not last right. long with that condition. But I, I kind of was sweeping dirt in his direction to kind of get him to move because I wanted to move him to safety. I didn't want to scare anyone who was out there. I didn't want him to get hit by a car. So I kind of gently brushed him. I didn't touch him, but I was brushing things at him. He could still feel it. Right. So any, any direction the dirt was coming at him a little bit, he would move away from it. So I kind of got him into the woods, but I have never come across a deaf and blind. It was the Helen Keller of raccoons. Wow. What, what it was. R.I.P. R.I.P. Helen Keller. R- no. <laughs> R.I.P. Raccoon. R- R- what was that Beatles song? Rocky Raccoon. Rocky, Rocky Raccoon. And then who's the woman who played Helen Keller? It was the... Um, Cousins, identical cousins. Yes, it's true. Meryl Streep. Uh, Meryl, Marilyn Tyler Morb. Barbara Streisand. It's one of those. Damn it. I can't think of her name. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is, is that I've given this show a four. You've given it a five. And now it's time to close the book on what's going on Forever. with Mike. Forever. Never to be mentioned again. Ever. That's right. But we're not done. Never. There's so many more pilots to dive into. Um, Please won't you join us next time when we watch the pilot episode of Best of Times. Here's a little something to whet your whistle. This ABC pilot starred seven teenagers in a 1980s style laugh-in. It told the light and dark side of teenage thoughts with dancing and singing added in for color. You can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots in iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice and then by clicking on one of our classically blue links in our show notes. Or go to YouTube and search The Best of Times Pilot. It's there. Yeah, if you got 48 minutes to kill. Yeah, or, or I mean, just like the Predator, like Predator 2. You know, Predator's in town with a few days to kill. Huh? I never saw it. Well, you can miss it. It stars Danny Glover and is awful. Okay. <laughs> um, contact us at couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. Call us on that number that he said earlier. one nine one zero pilots one Numero one, or go online. Follow us at uh, on Twitter. We're at uh, Couch Pilots Pod. You'll know what's coming further down the pike than anyone else. As we sure. reach out to the stars, you'll be able to see who reaches back, and maybe you just get a, a little touch, a little all that good stuff rub sure. off on you. Uh, we're on Facebook. We do a lot of posting on there. Go to fcfnetwork.com. We've got a whole family of shows, and uh, click on one of those. If you like, if you listen to this show, and you're like, eh, it's all right. Hey, guess what? There's probably even a better show that you right. might like. Or if you're listening to one of our other shows, maybe you'll find out about Couch Pilots and like this one even better. Right. It's all and, free. Yeah, you know, we've got 50 some episodes. Go mm-hmm. back and check out some of the other ones. You know, get the whole backstory. I mean, there's a backstory for a lot of the stuff that we talk about. Uh, we try not to do too many inside jokes, uh, but we do have storylines that sure. have uh, that have happened throughout our lives. We're lives. real people, real things happen to us. We share real pilots. We're real pilots. We're for sure real pilots. Well, sky uh, cops. We have we have domain over the sky. And you can find out about all that stuff. We want to share it with you, our frequent flyers. Instagram. That's right. Couch underscore pilots underscore podcast. That's right. Check us out there for sure. Uh, Do you have anything else, Captain Rassasher, you'd like to tell our our frequent flyers before we go for the day? You know, the country is in a state of shock. Even now, the country is in a state of shock. Yeah. What I suggest you do is you hold the one close to you. Mm-hmm. 
and know that not one man makes all the rules in That's this right. country. And if you still feel upset, if you still feel, you know, unsettled, definitely get a beep, you know, slap it in your face. Or, right. you know, take your beep and slap it in somebody else's face. That, and say, that person, yeah. And say, you know, fuck you, Trump, as you're doing it. Bleep you. Bleep, oh, sorry. Bleep you, Trump. Bleep you, Trump. <laughs> yeah, that person that you talked about holding near, turn them over. You know, pull down their bleep and put take your bleep and spread the bleep and put it right in the bleep, you know? Oh, I mean, and, you know, and don't be nice about it. I mean, just ram that bleep in that bleep. Yeah, it's called rage bleep. And um, you know what? Sometimes after a tough election like this, you need a little rage bleeping. Sure. So Sure. I mean, if you don't know the person, you know, ask them if you can bleep them. Mm-hmm. You know, if they say no... You, you move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. Because eventually somebody's going to say, yes, you can go ahead and bleep me all over the bleep. Yeah. Spray your bleep all over my hair, all over my chest. That's right. Someone will say yes. And with that. <laughs> and for the first time ever with that. <laughs> this pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip. We are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.